Hi again everybody, welcome to my latest video. Well in this video I'm going to do a opening, a box opening, and a product review very quickly. What I purchased about six, seven weeks ago is this Star G4 30S XP pen. So it has a tablet, a writing tablet on it, and it has a little pen that allows you to get into some fine-grained maneuvering if you're doing some editing. I bought it because there are some documents that I want to sign. I don't want to manually sign them and then scan them in. I like something a little clearer than that. So with this, I can actually create my signature and attach it to those documents in PDF format, whatever. Anyway, I'm going to go through this. We'll see how it looks. Hopefully, if you get something out of this, you'll consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, here's it in its retail box, unopened at this point. Got my knife. Tape. These things are kind of hard to cut, actually. They don't uh, cut easily. What do we got inside? Okay. Interesting little label. Tells you the website. Tells you when they're available if I run into a problem. That's, that's good. Start. Let's open this up. Looks like this is the pen. None of this is supposed to require any batteries. Uh, this is driven off of a USB. And I'm not sure exactly how it works. This pen does not have any uh, sort of source of power to it, according to the instructions I read online. I don't see any way to open this thing up. So I guess that's the case. It doesn't even push in here. So what do we got? Got a USB cable on it. We'll try it online in a few minutes. What do we come with? What it comes with here? So it comes with a few accessories in here. What is this? It's a holder for the pen, maybe? Hmm, doesn't look like it is. I'll have to read the instructions on what that's for. It's got extra tips. I did see that in the manual online. So it has a package of tips with it. Looks like it's got 10 replacement tips. They all look the same. There doesn't seem to be any difference between one and the other, not different sizes or anything. So here's the XP pad and the pen. Extra tips. Looks like it has an instruction book, but the one online is very good. I, I like the larger print to it. It's like a quick start guide. So I'll try to get started here. The same exact one it looks like from what I read online. Okay, go to the website. Let me keep this out and I'll see what the software entails because there's no DVD or USB in there. So that means I got to get it all from online. Here's the actual uh, advertisement on Amazon. That's where I bought this from. Unfortunately, the price has gone up about 50%. When I paid for this less than two months ago, it was only $19.99. And of course, I'm with Amazon Prime, so I would get free shipping anyway, so that's not necessarily anything big. I forget whether it was offered to the general public then or not. This is the ad, and as you can see, it has a 4x3 writing area to it, the stylus pen it goes into, battery-free, levels of pressure, I believe there it's referring to. It's got two buttons on the pen, and we'll talk about that more when we get into the configuration. You actually don't write on the pad, that's how you write on the screen so you wouldn't see anything done on the pad itself and here's an example of it being used which I will demonstrate during this video and if you're into editing pictures uh, if you're into just doing some artwork you can do all sorts of things with it I bought it primarily for the signature aspect of it right here okay with that let me show you the website where we can go to to download the software. So according to the manual, the website that we need to go to is www.xpen, which it shows at xpen.com. And that's jumping right into the download site, but you can go through and explore this site and you can see all the different, they have many different products. I happen to buy the smaller version of it, but I'm going to pick the product. And that's a Star Series tablet. So I got to give it the category. And then I want the 430 G430S. And there it is, a G430S. And what I have here is software, and I'm interested. You can run it on Mac. The instructions, I briefly looked at them, which I'll show in more detail. It uh, has extra features, actually, when you run it on a Mac. 
so you can download the Mac software if you want. It looks like they have many versions of the software. The latest one for the Windows was produced November 26th of 2019. That's what I had already downloaded and installed. If you want to download it, pretty straightforward. I'm going to demonstrate that. I'll do a save as. See, I'll go to my scratch area on my drive E. And I'll just say, this is the XPen Win 2019.zip file. I will download that. Finish downloading. It also verified that it doesn't have any viruses on it. Close that and take a look at my scratch area and see what I have. So it's just a regular zip file. You can, I like to always just right click on it and say extract all. It'll create probably another folder in here that won't be zipped. It'll put it in the same place. I'll do the extract. And there it is. At this point, I have on here the actual software drivers to download. Pretty straightforward. Uh, let me click on it and see what it does. I have to enter my admin password, of course. It has an old version. Do I want to uninstall and the old version? What the heck? I'll do that. And then it's just install. See, we get here and installing this thing. It's done. Pretty straightforward. Obviously, I can select the product type. It is a digital tablet. And it has like a quick reference guide here. It tells you how to set it all up, how to connect the wiring, whether it's a laptop or your desktop. It gives you some basic functions of the manual, which I'll download next. So we should be installed at this point. And the manual is up over here. The user manual in English, they have it in different languages. PDF, let's see, save target as should work. I want to go to my scratch. It'll be this English manual PDF. Save that. That was the parent directory to where I was here. So let me back up one. There we go. So it's a star series G40. Let's open this manual up and take a look at it. I like to blow things up a little bit. It looks like it covers several different models, Windows or Mac, both in the same manual. Safety precautions, general contents of the book. Looks like everything's broken into Windows and Mac. An overview. Obviously, this is the one that I have, the small 430S tablet. They have larger versions, and they even have a smaller version of that. There's the pen, shows you the writable area, the active areas, they call it. Here's the pen. It shows you uh, the actual button at the front, the, uh, the pen tip, excuse me, at the front. And it shows you button two and button one, and how you can, ass I'll show you later how those are assigned. And then the, in the driver's install installation, we've done that already. It tells you to plug it in first. I did not do that, so hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. But I'll connect it now and see what I get. Okay, I heard the sound. It shows the icon that goes down in the taskbar down here in the bottom. So we have this thing called the Pen Tablet app. And that's the actual, when I click on it, it opens up this uh, configuration software. Can I expand this? No as big as it's going to get. Let me shrink the window a little bit. That'll do it. Okay, so here's the configuration screen. You can see it has the right model number in it. You can choose different models. So it defaulted to that one, which is good. It shows the two buttons. So the top button is set for pen or eraser right now. As I recall from the instructions, but I'll show it again later, you can click on either one. And if you click on that button, it'll switch from writing to erasing mode. And then the bottom button is for right click. So it's equivalent to a mouse right click. You could right now that's what it's set to, but you can set it to anything you want. Or you could disable it. This is how you set the sensitivity. So if you wanted to, you can actually make it right now. It's output is pretty soft. You can take this and you can drag it around and make it as hard or as soft as you want. And you could test it out. So if I come over here and I, you can also do, use this slider if I want to make it a harder one, it'll automatically do it for you from soft to hard. But if I take the stylus now and I take it over to the pen, to the pad, and I actually press here, you will see that as I press on to the pad here, you can see the pressure on the current pressure part. This part right here, you can see it actually going up or down. And I can make it if I grab this and I make it harder, I'm using it as a mouse right now. So this is stylus doing this. And if I push now anywhere on it, it's a little bit harder push to get it over to the higher number. Not sure what that number and the pressure represents, but it is relative probably. Or I can make it softer. And then if I come over here and just press anywhere and it's a lot softer touch to go to the high, to the high number or the high pressure point. I could make it 
uh, absolute mode or relative mode. It all depends on which kind of software you're using, whether or not which one of these you want to use. Absolute mode means it's the absolute mode anywhere in the screen, right? Or, so right now this little box here all around on the pad, it can actually move that little mouse anywhere on my full 27 inch screen. If I made it relative, then I could make this box, you know, follow a different category. And actually what they have here is a way of setting the active area. Also, I could flip it. Right now I have it in right-handed mode with the control pad on the side here. I can make it so that it's left hand by clicking 180. So now it's upside down speaking. And it shows on the screen here what each of the four points on the screen would represent on a view of what I currently have on my screen, on my 27 inch monitor for this display number one. I could change it to go to different displays. I can actually make it go to monitor two. That's what I have on monitor two right now. Or I could go to monitor three, because I have three of them. Let's go back to monitor one, my primary monitor. And I could display special things on the screen if I want to. So this little box here, I can actually tell it that I'm interested only in this area that I want the little square on the pad. So if I go and I grab it, hold the left button on my mouse and let it go, click again. Now look at this. It's only that little small window on the screen that this whole tablet, as I move the mouse around, it'll only stay in that little window, which is relatively small compared to the in entire size of the screen. So if I'm way over here, I have it upside down right now. That's why it's 180 going to this side. Let me flip this over to zero again. So it's right-handed again. And as I come over here in the active area, I'm all the way to the right here. I can come down to this side. I can come over to here and I can go up to there. So I have it set for a relative mode. Uh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to switch it back full screen again and back to my monitor. So now it went back to full screen again. So I had to change it from one monitor to the next to clear out that setting. And a few other options here I won't get into. But as you can see, it has quite a bit of configuration. Now this one here, this little checkbox is if you're using a special add-on to Windows called Windows Ink, which is automatically provided in Windows 10. I'm not going to go into covering window ink on this. If you're into graphic art and using your computer to edit or to draw with, uh, that's something you're probably already familiar with. I think that's about it. Let me change this back down to normal mode or I can grab it in here and make sure it's right. I think that's about it. I think that's all I have to do. I can change the speed of the mouse just like the mouse speed. I can actually move it over or not. I think I have to put it in relative mode for that. Yeah, in relative mode, I can change the speed of the mouse. In absolute mode, it doesn't matter. That's the configuration of this font. And Windows Ink, by the way, you can actually have a configuration that gets imported or exported. So that's just one of the uh, powers of that particular in ingrained software to Windows 10. So that's the configuration. So everything I just talked about in the configuration of the uh, actual pen is described in the Windows section of the manual. But be aware, this is obviously a different version of it because it does not match the configuration screen that I was just working with. There are several differences to it. For example, they have a right and left hand button here as opposed to doing it, you know, with the degrees, you know, 90, 180, 270, etc. So they do get into some of the detail of the pen functioning. They talk more about the sensitivity and current print pen pressure. And they go into a lot of detail, you know, in what absolute mode is versus relative mode. And they talk about Windows Ink just briefly, nothing in detail. And then they go into Mac usage and Mac has slightly more capability um, than this. It actually has the ability to have the pen change colors on the fly. So now, let me show you how to actually use a graphics program with it. Paint 3D, a new, and now I'm in a painting program. Then I can actually come over here and 
I can use my mouse or the pen to get over here and get into the color that I want. So if I want red, for example, I would click on that. Right? And now if I come over here. Okay, there we go. I hit the button by accident. I'm not going to use my real signature for you, but you can obviously, that's the main reason that I purchased it, but you can do anything you want with it. You could draw boxes. This particular one comes with the ability to change backgrounds. I could change pens. So I'm going to come over here and I can change to, let's say, a thicker brush. Oil paint. There we go. And I could change the size of the thickness of the brush over here if I wanted to. Make it a little bit thinner. Let me change the color to a different color as well. I feel like I'm back in kindergarten with finger paints, right? Let me uh, go over here and get into, just have to hover, I don't even have to touch the pad. And it moves the mouse around on the screen, which is good. So if I don't want to click on something, I just do like that. Let me pick a much thicker brush. And let me click a different color again. Just have to hover over it and I can get to it. And I can do. So what do you think of my art? You know, maybe I can sell that for something. But it does well. I can uh, also do an eraser. If I come over here and go to eraser. And I can erase stuff, right? Whoops, I didn't click on it. There we go. Now I'm an eraser. I'll make a thick eraser. And I can erase everything. Couldn't do that when I was in kindergarten though. Okay, I think that's a pretty good little quick demo of what we can do with this. Well that concludes the box opening and review of this XP pen for graphical writing on the screen. As you can see it works fairly well and has a lot of configuration capabilities to it much more than I thought that I would have. Hopefully you got something out of this video. And if you did, please do me a favor and consider subscribing to my channel. Well, take care until the next time and be well in these trying times, please.